Fixed some street signs, worked on alleys, jetted some sewers, fixed a mailbox that was uh, knocked down when we moved snow, got new fire rings, uh, switched the uh, overhead service to an underground as we've been having multiple issues with it, met with Houdini's on what they need, uh, removed a rotten pole out in the country, uh, new wire was ran for the golf ball place, dug in some service, mowing is going on, weed eating, fixed a couple showers at the campground, planted a tree. Did some disconnects, ran some new introduct for the new pizza place, meeting with uh, the golf ball place about how, what our plan is to bring it back to the way it was um, after we disturbed all the soil. We're gonna till it up, we're gonna seed it, we're gonna add some rock up there since we disturbed it, we'll make it look the way it's supposed to. Um, started hanging street banners, storm sewer checks, cold patching, filled out paperwork for a BAPCO that they needed for their fire insurance. Uh, trying to find a shut off for a resident that nobody's been able to find for a long time. Um, so we'll continue to work on that. Dealt with the concrete out of the Lakewood area, planning for the pole replacement at Houdini's. Citywide cleanup, got the trucks ready for citywide cleanup. When we say we got the truck ready, uh, in that red dump truck, we got that belt that we use for the sand. We have a plate that goes on top of that, so when we put all this garbage or whatever debris is and it doesn't mess up the belt um took a little bit more finesse than what we anticipated um <laughs> there were some old bolts that were rusted that we had to cut off and then find new uh got the windshield replaced in the 550 as during the winter it took a when we were going out to replace a transformer that we had to go down a chunk of ice came off of the bioduct and put a crack into the windshield so just had to do it. Uh, did the cleanup of the west side of uh, town and behind the shop. If you go behind the shop, there's no more like 50,000 pallets and uh, just tons of garbage sitting back there anymore. Uh, pulled primary wire for the pizza place today. Um, and then we've been having some issues with our nitrate filter, uh, nitrate filter number two at the water plant. For some reason, we would see our nitrates jump. Um, something's off in the programming side of it to where uh, it's not regenerating and backwashing like it's supposed to at the certain time frame that it's supposed to it's going longer so now we're just going to do a manual um i've already talked to electric pump they're pretty much unavailable for like the next two weeks as they are in um whatever that town was that got wiped out by the tornado trying to get them back up uh, and having a water plant so we're, we're just gonna nurse her along until uh, we can get EP to come and help fix that issue. And since we can do it manually, it's not a pressing issue for us. Um, no reason to pull them away when there's obviously a dire need for them where they're at. So um, we're just gonna continue on the citywide cleanup tomorrow uh, and probably Wednesday. And then uh, Wednesday, the pole behind Houdini's that's very cantered uh, will be replaced. Uh, and we're doing some things different on that. There's a ronk on the top. We don't use ronks anymore. Um, and that's part of the reason why it canters the way it is. We're removing the ronk, um, which should hopefully keep the pole straighter for a longer period of time than what's been there currently. That's just... Brief synopsis what we've been doing. Did you guys start cleaning up today? Yes. Were you up by my east of my house? No. Up on the hill there yet? Somebody, somebody pushed out one of those old bank safes full of concrete. Oh my gosh. I think weighed 
a thousand pounds, and then it was gone this morning. I was wondering if you guys had to pick that thing up. You did not mention that one to me, so I'm assuming you did we not have to We have not been up take... there. Um, Somebody scavenged oh, it. Oh, waiting to the iron pile. I don't know if they take them because they're concrete filling. I'm not sure if they take those or what they do. I thought, oh, you better hope somebody comes and gets that. It was yeah. gone this morning. And this is where we use heavy equipment. Thank yeah. goodness. Um, <laughs> we will figure that out. It's um, gone. So you're in good shape on that one. Hey. We don't have a police chief report. We'll have to go to the city of um, so last week, um, there were several reports that were due on the 30th uh, that with either state or the federal um, government, um, some of them I had some access issues that I've actually been working on for quite a while. I finally um, got, got access to a couple of those reports and was able to get those submitted. Um, so those are all completed. Um, the police department did make first contact on several nuisances this weekend, I know, of trying to to get maybe uh, just a little bit ahead of the game. A lot of them, I think, were long drafts and different things that people just hadn't taken care of. So we're kind of been working on that a little bit. Um, and then uh, last week, I'm um, involved uh, meeting with the foundation um, on the community center and some other fundraising efforts um, also discussed was some uh, choices for the exterior colors, which I think we've kind of gotten with all of those samples sitting over there on the table. Um, then we'll go into some interior finishes probably starting this week and trying to come up with some of those um, so that the contractor can get stuff ordered and keep things moving. Um, I did work on the ordinance for the community center, um, trying to get the, the board um, established. Uh, so that will be upcoming here. Um, you'll probably see the draft in the next in the next meeting so that we can try and get that going so we can get a board selected and um, move forward with that. Um, I did discuss with a property owner uh, last week about a metal storage building. Um, and as I thought about it over the weekend, um, in looking at our zoning ordinance, it doesn't really disallow it, but it also doesn't meet what our building standards are. So um, I'm gonna probably tell them no on that so that we can they can process what they need to process and go forward. Um, to do what whether they want to build a garage there or whatever because they could build a garage um, And that's pretty much it for me Yeah, one thing I will say is if you look at it the 124 Lake Street um, We met with the contractor over there, which I'm not very happy about but they have to rip out a new panel of our brand new Lakeshore Drive Road because the landscaper cut the gas line and they have to put a new gas line in and the contractor wanted to just cut out a two by two square so they could reconnect and I told them not a chance on a five month old road uh, they will have to replace that whole panel um, especially with what we just did to that road it was marked I don't know why he did what he did but I can't comment on that so good for you for not running you just this band -aid. We spent way too much money and way too many gray hairs on that road mm -hmm. um, to let them cut out a two by two. Yeah. Okay, <clears throat> thank you. We have uh, building permits. Eric, they're all passed and signed. Yeah, uh, Eric's the one I had to tell him to have a minimum of a foot and a half rise on his building so the foot to meet the 3 to 12 roof pitch. And on the uh, the Blake one had a long discussion over there with that gentleman, the contractor, the homeowners are okay with the contractor, kind of an iffy guy. And he explained to him that um, he had to stay 12 feet back from the front property line to go anything over 18 inches. Um, so he, his original plan to put a new, a new deck out there he was going to go seven foot six inches from the house, which would make him six inches over the 12 foot setback, which is going to be no longer no taller than 18 inches. So he's going to um, change that to a, to a seven foot stick out from the house. But other than that, everything is okay. Um, on that building permit, does it meet the average yard setback? Because that's over 18 inches. 
Well, we had that same <laughs> issue on Blossom Street, you know, where we fought the the setback and the height with the railing and yeah, I said the hanging <coughs> railing. <clears throat> Usually, when when the the, the average setback is like when they don't know where the property marker is. They knew exactly where the property marker was on this Blake house. But but they aren't meeting the average yard setback. All them houses, the the front of the Blake house and the ones to the north of that are even with the Blake house. Then you skip Garl's because he's that way back, yeah. and you get down to Bogue and and um, Kessel there now. They're that, that deck's going to stick out a lot farther, farther to the west than what the average yard setback is. And then, you know, with the railing on top of 24 inches, it doesn't meet our ordinances. Well, that, that, that's one of the reasons they did that average uh, front yard setback is for, they didn't want somebody to stick way out and obstruct the view, whether we agree with it or not, but that is the rule. So if it's over 18 inches, uh, it has to have a railing, and then it does meet that. So, Hypothetically, three years from now, if they wanted to build onto that deck, they could do that, and they could go straight up, and then they're sticking way out there, so it has to be that average setback. Well, I always assumed that when we knew what the property markers were, you could use the front yard setback rule. And then when, you, when they didn't know where the front I can't, I can't hear him, I'm sorry. He, he said, if you, if you know where your property, exactly where your property lines are, then you could use the 12 foot setback rule, not necessarily what would be the average setback is what Eric is talking about. That, that's not true because I I had the same instance up on Broughton. I wanted to put the deck out a little bit further because where that average yard setback was, I had to step down a step to get in the front door. So I wanted to take it out another three feet and I got denied that because it didn't meet the front yard setback because I had to put a railing on it. And so the way our ordinance reads on the average front yard setback, it, has, it cannot be out any further than the average front yard or 12 feet, whichever is the furthest back, if that makes sense. So they can't go to the 12 foot if they don't meet the average front yard setback. That's why they have that in place is for people, whether we agree with that rule or not, that's what's the current rule. And if we don't know where the where the property markers are, then we have it in our building permit. They have to have a survey so we know where it is. You, they know the they know where the property markers are. Oh, they do. Okay. Yes. Sorry, I thought I heard they did. Yeah. No, they know where the property markers are. That's why Eric used the twelve feet. Yeah, but he, it's still the okay. Yeah, so the twelve feet. That. So Eric is saying it's approved if they go back twelve feet from the property line, but it doesn't meet the average front yard setback. Right. We don't, we don't need a motion. Let's do the the uh, first four or the first three. Let's move on those. That be all right? I'll make a motion to approve the first three. Second. No second. Roll call. Frank. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Jensen. Yes. Beckman. Yes. Okay. Now, what do you want to do on Randy Blake? Along with the average setback, I just think I was required as long as you knew the property line. Well, we were, we just had that issue last year, Eric, with on Blossom Street, and again I I had it three years ago up there on Broughton Street. I I asked for an, a variance because I I knew I was not meeting the front yard setback, and they denied it. Okay, well look, the thing on Broughton Street was. Um, on, on Blossom Street, Blossom Street, right? Blossom Street, and yeah, then I said I, I built a deck up there on Broughton, and I was denied the the extra three feet because I didn't meet the average yard setback. Oh well, just to the point of reference, I guess the one on Blossom Street, the property line is three feet inside the sidewalk, so Rick wouldn't have been able to do anything there without the average, you know. Um, <coughs> So I'll, I'll go re remeasure. I mean, I'll measure the 200 feet of each side and, and get the average. And uh, they'll probably be over some, but because uh, right, so right, so right, 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 the 12-foot mark is going to be 25 inches tall. If, they, if we allow them to build this deck today, even though they're just calling it a deck today, two years from now, 
they can build something from that deck without a building permit because it's already there. And now they have a structure out there. And no, that's what the they have to have a permit to, to the build the site. The structure setback was put in place that's by the plan and zoning when they put it in place. Uh, we've ran across it several times. If they want to go off of that, they have to get a variance. Um, and, and you know what I mean? So if they're not meeting the average front yard setback from the street, they have to have a variance. Whether it, it could be, the average front yard could be 18 feet. Well, about, we're not going to take any action on it tonight. We'll wait for Eric to come back next week and tell us. Well, yeah, I that. mean, because then we te technically then the planning and zoning should change that to not allow any, then it should be all average setbacks instead of it being the 12 feet versus. It, that, that's the way it is, Teresa. It's not, it's, 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 it's hard for me to explain over the phone. Right, but but when I'm when I'm talking to a, a property owner and I go and I look and I don't necessarily read you know the necessarily the entire I try to read the whole thing but I was like I go and I look at what the grid is in the zoning book and it says 12 feet and I'm like well as long as you're 12 feet back you should be fine you know but then if we have to go then we just need to make it all together that that we don't have that setback and it should just be what the average setback okay. is of all of the neighbors and not have a, 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 a setback of 12 feet an yeah, it, you know that, that they, that they then don't have an option but you know on, on the one side and I don't you know again my personal opinion I wouldn't approve a construction permit for them to build a structure on that deck now that that deck is created because I think a deck is different than an actual structure um, so at the end of the day, as like if they aren't meeting the proper setbacks, then that deck can't become a structure. Um, but you know, you I know, would, as far as the building is concerned, I would, I would recommend a visit with Gary, Gary Wicker, or uh -huh. somebody else on that planning and zoning. They're the ones that come up with that. And I know we, I think it was a couple, maybe eighteen months ago, we brought that back to the planning and zoning uh, about maybe changing that, and they, I think they went like two hundred. Of yeah. All the way down the street. Um, I can't remember exactly how long ago it was. But yeah, and, the last two and, a half and, years. and I understand the reasoning behind it. When you look down your street, you don't want anybody, you know, that's completely in front of you, you know, that's obstructing your view. So I get that. Um, yeah. So Eric will take a look at it again, and you know, we we'll wait and bring it up in the next meeting. So sure. Okay. Yeah. Um, I, I've driven down that street and I looked at it pretty close today. They got a lot of stuff on the street. And, it, you know, if we wait another two weeks for a meeting and they're in limbo, we're just going to leave it sit there? What do you mean, as far as stuff? I mean, they, I they've got there's wrong. rock pile, there's landscaping breaks. Well, yeah, I mean, that's why they were trying to get this so that they could do this in conjunction with that other thing. But, I mean, it, it you know, the, the landscape, all a lot of that is for behind because they couldn't keep that there. So they, okay. they got a lot going on behind. behind too. Yes, right. they got a big construction project right. going on behind. That Most of that stuff doesn't have to do with the deck. That actually is the stuff that they've got going on behind the property. Right. That's off of Lakeshore. All right. Okay, let's talk about that. The EO and the Thanks, Eric. Yep. So, um, and Jason can kind of explain the reasoning. Um, we had talked to several weeks ago about the possibility of doing where they're building the storage units of doing a water, possibly sewer extension that would bring the main across from the north, north to the south and then run an extension of the main along the south side of 175. And part of that reason is, you know, anytime if they're going to continue to expand there or construction is going to happen there, um, every time that they have to bore underneath the road, where one, where do you put the the shutoff valve? Because the city is then responsible from the shutoff valve to the main because we our ordinance states that it's the responsibility of the owner from the shutoff valve to the property itself. Um, so at the end of the day, when we were talking, you know, about this, Jason and I um, had a little bit of discussion, and then um, I did contact a different engineering group, that one that I, you know, have been real comfortable with working with, 
um, to try and give them an opportunity to take a look at the project and see if it was something that was feasible. Jason actually had them also look at a street project potentially coming down the road um, on various street things because they, they're an all-inclusive kind of engineering group. But um, the response was they were very interested in, in looking at it and doing it. Um, and then I was approached about a week and a half ago from the manager down at the Carroll office and said, hey, you know, we know that money can be tight for you all right now. And um, we've got an intern that's coming on for the summer, and this would be a great project for them to work on. It would be all supervised by, you know, they're certified engineers, obviously. Um, but it would then be at no cost to us to basically take a look at this project, have it surveyed, um, run all the cost estimates and everything, get us basically to the point where we've got engineering plans, but then we would decide if we want to move forward with the project. So basically it would be giving JEO an opportunity to come in and take a look at our project, um, have a couple of meetings with, with Jason and I, and then possibly council to present and kind of go forward if we think that this project um, would be something feasible for the future in planning. Um, Jason might ha you know, have some comments on, on that. I don't, you know, um, that's why I brought it to you because Noah is trying to get their interns lined up on various projects and he would really like to have the opportunity to come and do some things for Lakeview and so that's why I have it in front of you this evening. My so, question is, is this a speculation um, for additional structure improvement, you know, building, or is it something that we, that is, somebody's already, you know, spoken that they're going to be needing it in the near future. We the gentleman kind of, that is putting up that storage unit stated that his goal is to go the entire length. With storage units? With storage. Or some sort of... Some sort of business or storage unit that's going to require water and wastewater. Okay. And the, the building that he's putting up is requiring water, wastewater, and electricity. Because each of the units is going to have... A bathroom. A bathroom in it and those kinds of things so that somebody could rent them to either use for um, a building, a shop, or you know whatever they want to set up an office or whatever they, they, they could. And so they, when he does that, let's talk about the, with the one that Shane is proposing to put up right now or get ready to put up. Let's say, I, I can't remember how many stalls it is, let's just say it's eight for conversation purposes. Is he going to have eight water meters from the city in there? Yes. Or is he going to have one yes. that he no, my understanding is it would be eight water meters. Alright, so uh, do we have, and, and I understand that we, if we do this, we want to do it right. I'm in agreements with having the this JEO consulting group, but we might be getting the cart in front of the horse. Do we have a, a, a development agreement in place with them? You know, um, like for example, out of the east side of the lake, we had that person do that development out there. Right. They had to put in the water. I think that's pretty close. I'm not positive, but I remember we discussed that, and there was some cost to the to the oil. developer. Yeah, but that was a housing development. This is just a storage. It, it's well, storage. So it's commercial. I mean, basically, it's it's commercial. We know quite honestly you know right, right, yes right. Yep. you know yeah I mean certainly that hasn't been you know a development agreement hasn't been you know obviously reached or anything I guess Jason and I were thinking you know that if that area was to get developed instead of having to bore each time underneath the road um, you know in whose expense is that if that service line fails between the the curb stop and the main um, then that just becomes uh, uh, you know, an issue so, on our part. For program. example, Sparky's and the, and the veterinary clinic in the, uh, the car wash right now, is that served from across the road from the north and to the south border underneath, or is that served from a different direction? I believe it's served from a different direction. I can grab my map and Jason check. Jason thinks that it's served, I, I think we had this talk, we thought it was served from a different direction. It just doesn't come down. Um, 
west that far? Right, to the west that far. I, I'm thinking it started but, off that third street, the Heinz Park easement. And that could be. Because there's some of that area that is served off of third street. And, and if the, say, hopefully the state redoes this highway in the near future because it is rotten is, is the new water main coming across going to be a problem if they got to you know dig out all the old soil and put repack it in and you know a new new water well, i mean yeah across. they would bore a six inch underneath uh, what my what we've talked to noah about was boring underneath connecting to our existing water main over there that we had boring a six inch under and then we can 45 it off. and then branch off and then they're not having to bore underneath that road every time we have a development you yeah. know we can do this in sections or we can do the whole thing you know do we bore the six inch and do a 50 foot chunk and put a hydrant there so we can flush it because we don't want a dead end right and then when they expand, we come off the hydrant and go farther and farther and farther. Or do we do it all at once and call it good? The sewer, there's a manhole right there by that existing storage shed that they can get the grade and tie into that manhole, which goes across the street over to the one we call the Dollar General. It's lift station 13, I believe. Yeah, yeah. So they can go into that manhole and we can take the sewer main and expand that out and put it all hopefully in the same trench and obviously sewer below water. Um, we're not going to do it the other way around. Uh, but then the to tie in every time he does an expansion or he sells off a lot and somebody else does an expansion or whatever it should happen to be, now we're not having a bore underneath that road. One bore, six inch main, which is what AWWA requires. So. Well, I guess this is just a preliminary anyway, and it's not going to cost us anything to have right. the, it's the not. estimate done. I mean, we just will use their service and and do it. But again, I, I think there needs to be a development agreement prior to the work being done. Well, yeah, because at some point, if they're actually going to build these buildings, we're going to have to figure out how they're going to get their water and sewer. You know and how that's going to all tie in and that's kind of why we were looking for this project i mean we do i think in order to get the electrical box to them it's going to take a little bit so it's not like we can just you know do this overnight anyway um but yeah and, and in the long term is this the best planning you know wanted to look at this and and i told no i said i want to make sure we're doing the best planning for the community for the future not just what's going to get us by in the next six months you know, so that we're making good sense out of a project and not just spending, you but, know, but obviously. we don't want to waste money either, you know. No, and, and that's what I mean. I said I don't want to waste money, but is, you know, but I also got to look down not just in what's coming down the pipe in the next year, what could come by down the pipe in the next five to ten. So. Yeah, so, so Teresa, can, can Noah, if we do this, you know, move forward with this, which I have no problem with, can he look at coming off of that, I think it's at the end of 3rd Street or 175 Beach where that hydrant is, where that new 12 inch main just went out to a back so there's a hydrant down there. Can we look at coming off that way to, as well instead of coming underneath the highway? I don't know what the cost difference would be to board underneath the highway or wherever that one stops that's feeding them. Oh, you mean, the, okay, the, the new one that we put underneath the road that goes out for a backhoe, is that what you're talking yeah, about? Yeah, in there and going yeah, west. Well, yeah, well, there's two lines that go out there. Um, and I know there's a hybrid down there at that corner. But then, I don't know where the water, like the, the car wash and the, and the veterinary clinic get their water from. So the car wash. If there's already a main there that could be extended instead of having to come across the road. I don't know that without looking at the maps. But I'm sure Jason can look at them. <laughs> We looked at that and we talked about that with Noah, and it's the added cost. There was extra feeded or footage uh, by tying off of where the car wash comes into play compared to the boring aspect of it. That's why. Is, is that car wash at a dead end now, then? I do not believe so. Uh, from what I. 
this map I got in front of me is not the greatest by any means. <laughs> so we'll we'll explore, I guess, that option if you here. guys want to, you know, look forward. I know I, there was a reason why we talked about boring underneath the road. Um, okay. Oh wait. Oh. I'm in favor of moving forward with this GEO engineering to provide it no cost to the city. Is that a motion? Mm -hmm. Sure. No second. Roll call. Beckman. Yes. Frank? Yes. Jensen? Yes. Thank you. Yes. Okay, we have resolution 2024-22. We've got to hire seasonal employees. A motion to approve. I'll make that motion. Second? Second. Roll call. Jensen? Yes. Frank? Yes. Beckwin? Yes. Thank you. Yes. Okay, we have to set a public hearing for the budget amendment. June third. So um I did provide additional information. So the front front copy and Dale, I sent this to you by email, um, of what the budget amendment would look like and the second page basically kind of entails what that is. Um so um the police um we're looking at uh, 153,524 budget amendment and part of that obviously there's some salaries there. Um the vehicles I took the purchase of the vehicles that we did and I moved it out of capital out of the capital improvement and I put it into the police budget. And that's just how I budget for things and versus it all coming out of capital improvements because I have a definition different than most on capital improvements, but um, so I put it here. So we have to cover we have to cover a budget amendment for that expense, um, and then the canine. Even though we've got in, gotten in, to, you know, over twenty two thousand for the canine, you still have the expense going out. So I've got to cover for that expense that wasn't necessarily budgeted for, um, and then there's some miscellaneous miscellaneous expenses, you know, just to kind of cover them until they get to the end of the fiscal year. I basically had told Chris um, this morning that, that he really needs to watch anything if, if he can hold off an invoice or whatever, but no, you know, watch what his spending is for the rest of the fiscal year so that we don't, after this amendment is done, and obviously, you know, this covers it and maybe cushions it just a little bit, but we certainly, you know, my idea is like watch your expenditures till the end of the fiscal year, you really don't have the cash. Um, so, hey, so my reason is right, he's 73000 over budget with salary? He will be by the end of the fiscal year if we don't make this amendment because of, of okay. the salary expenditure. So right now he's about 25000 over, um, but we got to get through four more pay periods and um, go from there. And, you know, obviously summer's coming up and that might require a little bit, you know, extra. Um, and then the community and economic development. So that 125,000 um, is to cover the amount that was spent on the Highway 75 project that was expended into this fiscal year. I don't think Scott had planned on it moving into this fiscal year. So um, that line item is over, and we basically finished that project kind of after Jason and I got got here. So we finished that expenditure out. Um, and then there were some grant administration fees spent uh, in the Region 12. I think at the end of the day, I think it was all the thought process that that was going to ex get expended in last fiscal year and it stretched over into this one and it wasn't it wasn't part of the budget. Um, and then there's a few engineering fees um, for the, re the community center retention prom pod project that were paid with this fund before I set up the special fund after I got here. So um, it, and it's just covering for the expenditure. It's not saying that we didn't get revenues in to cover it. It's just you got to cover for the expenditure side of it. Um, and then the community center, um, these are for anticipated expenditures for the project before the end of the fiscal year. Um, the revenues were added into the budget amendment for, so it's, a, it's an equal expenditure in and rev, you know, revenue in and expenditure out. Um, but I've got to cover for the expenditure side of it um, so that we don't um, necessarily, the capital projects fund, I don't anticipate to go over budget, but I want to make sure that I've got it cushioned in there so that it, it, you know, auditors really don't like it when you go over budget on any one function. Um, and, and really, I can kind of explain to you how, and I don't know if Scott ever explained this to you. So 
in the next couple of pages, I've got a revenue and expense report. This is more of an expenditure report, but highlighted in, L in yellow is how we all look at different functions and how the state looks at functions when they're budgeted. So the things that are highlighted in yellow is the big stuff that you don't want to go over at the, at the bottom dollar. So like, even though water right now is over budget, because of the other enterprise funds covering for itself, we don't have to do a budget amendment on that particular line because you know we've saved enough in some of the others, we haven't expended everything out, so we should be okay not to do a budget amendment there. But I just wanted to make sure that you guys understand is when I look at a function, it's like the police and fire total. Well, at the end of the day, I know that we have transfers out for the fire department, so I want to make sure that that's accounted for, so that's why I'm looking at what the budget amendment is for the police. You know, various things, because this kind of gives you a picture of what we have left in the budget that hasn't been expended. You know, so when we go to look at the functions of how the budget is set up, these are done by function. Does that make sense? Sort of? There's my... I'd, I'd like to make a comment about the police uh, budget. You know, six, seven months ago, they was purchasing things, and he says we got enough in our budget. Now we're right this short. Yep, and um, and I kind of told him that this next budget year, we really don't. You know, he's going to have to really think about everything that he's expending out to make sure that he saves, so that he's got enough at the end of the budget year. Um, so yeah, at the end of the day, I I don't. My intent at the beginning of the year when we budget, there's things that you can do a budget amendment for. A lot of that, what I like to do is for is like if we have unexpected or we, we put, because you don't know what a capital project is necessarily going to cost. So you can always do a budget amendment for those reasons. But standard operating stuff, we should never go over budget. Well, and that's, we, that's should, we, should plan, we should plan accordingly for that. And yeah, so um the the vehicles that was my option to do that yeah. this way yeah, um and obviously yeah. the canine you know some of that on the other things you know he really needs to maybe button down the hatches a little bit yeah. but well i think i think some of the things we do got to make sure that he's watching how much overtime our guys are getting double double shift to them uh, there's a lot right. of we got two guys on duty at the same time in the office and that then he cuts the budget pretty fast too well yeah he's probably trying to I know he's probably trying to make sure they all get their full 40 hours and whatnot have you, but... Well, and, and some of the salaries, and some of the salaries is also due to that we, you know, we increase their pay, and that probably wasn't accounted for back in April when we did the original budget, so there's... It, it, it was in our original budget. Was it in? Okay. I mean, I know, like, you know, putting George to the detective position and different things, those salary, those salary bumps maybe not were accounted for, but that's not all of it, obviously. So, you know, um, but we'll get there. It's just... Some of this is still you just kind of cleaning things up to where you want it to be so the line right. items match better than what they were originally. Yep. Mm -hmm. But we need a motion to set the public here in the budget amendment. A motion to approve. I'll make that motion. Second. I'll second it. Roll call. Jensen? Yes. Sankamp? Yes. Beckman? Yes. Frank? Yes. Anybody have anything else? Otherwise, we'll have a motion to adjourn. I do have a question on transfer. I heard Drew Grapevine, and it's not coming from the source, so I'm, I'm asking. The transformer that was ordered or whatever for the locker, I heard was going to the community center. Is there any truth to that? It's two different sizes. Okay. okay. That's, I just had a question. Won't work. Motion to adjourn. I'll make that motion. Second? I'll second. Meeting adjourned. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, guys. Yep. Thanks, Dale. Have a safe trip.